Welcome to Forward with NACI, Inspiring Entrepreneurial Action, a podcast that shares the stories of everyday entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial leaders, and the communities that support us. We hope that this diverse collection of stories brings you inspiration, inspires you to take action, and ignites entrepreneurship in your community as we make our way forward together. Welcome to this episode of Forward with NACI. I am really excited to have two very special guests today at our Earfluence studio in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, coming to us are Marcy Euler, who is the president of the Pima Community College Foundation, and her colleague and lifelong friend, um, Lisa Dietlin, who is a philanthropic advisor and works on transformational philanthropy. So, um, near and dear to my heart are these two ladies. So I wanted to welcome you to our podcast. And um, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's a wonderful day. Any day we get to talk about philanthropy um, and I get to see my friend Marcy is a great day. That's that's wonderful. And I should say um, Marcy and I met each other in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, actually, we met each other prior to that at another event, um, uh, the Bellwether Awards, a couple, right before the pandemic, in fact. But uh, we attended an ideation workshop in Charlotte in early June, and we came to the workshop wearing almost identical outfits. So... <laughs> Uh, polka dotted uh, blouses. So we became fast friends and um, really shared a passion for fundraising. And then, of course, we had a chance to meet Lisa later. So I want to start with Marcy. You have such an interesting um, background, Marcy. And, and I know we're going to get into some of the things that you're doing now. But why don't you start out and tell us a little bit about yourself and then um, maybe the, the somebody in, who was instrumental in your life as either a mentor or, or shaped your uh, career in some way. And then we'll We'll go over to Lisa and ask her the same question. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having us again. This is really exciting to be able to do something. Technology is just amazing, right? Yes. That yeah. we are sitting in three different corners of the country <laughs> and, and able to do this in a way that feels so personal and connected. So thank you for this opportunity. So I grew up in uh, the Pacific Northwest, Washington. Washington and Montana. And when I moved to Montana in eighth grade, I met Lisa. Lisa and I both went to the same middle school in a little town called Livingston, Montana. And if you watched any of the news during the Latin June, uh, Livingston is one of the communities that had flooding damage from the Yellowstone, the catastrophic flooding uh, that affected Yellowstone Park and large community, not large communities, a large number of community, small communities in Montana. And that still is where uh, I have a home since my parents have passed away. Uh, so Lisa and I were in eighth grade together, and I graduated from high school in Montana, and she did not. So we lost track of one another. Uh, I did graduate from high school. Just so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to imply otherwise. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, my, my path took me to graduate school to become an administrator in a college or university environment, which I did. I came to Tucson and worked for the University of Arizona for many years, married, had kids, dropped out of the workforce in order to be a mom, and yet never wasn't involved in something. So was always a member of a group trying to do good in the community or helping raise money for the schools that my kids were in. And so I really sort of came into philanthropic work in a backdoor way, which I think is often the case for people in our industry. Uh, you don't necessarily grow up saying, I want to be the director of a foundation because that's not really something that we think about as kids. And so by, by different twists and turns of life, I ended up four years ago becoming the president of Pima Foundation at the Pima Community College. And it has been the experience of a lifetime. And for me, everything that I've done previously sort of 
channeled me into this work. I think education is this amazing leveling field for people to be able to make something that maybe they didn't ever anticipate uh, and move out of poverty or move into a better job uh, and being able to fundraise for this particular college in Tucson and some of the innovative things that are happening is really exciting work. That's outstanding. And Lisa, um, so we heard a little bit about your your story. So we know you graduated from high school and <laughs> then some. You're one of those overly educated people. But tell us a little bit um, from your perspective. So so what happened when, when you well, left? Well, where did I go, uh, right? Um, so where did you go? Where did I go? Um, I went to Michigan um, to be uh, the short answer. Um, my family is originally from Michigan, and my father loved to hunt and fish. And so we moved to Montana about a half a year before Marcy got there. My, fa my father worked on the railroad, the Burlington Northern Railroad. And um, I was the new kid in the middle of seventh grade, and Marcy was the new kid at the start of eighth grade. So, you know, uh, newbies sticking together um, is kind of the way our friendship started. And um, it has blossomed into an amazing, you know, 30 plus year, 35 plus year friendship. But um, in the, toward the end of my eighth grade year, my father passed away on the mighty Yellowstone. Uh, he drowned and um, my family, my mother chose to relocate us back to Michigan. And as Marcy and I talked, there was no email, there was no texting, there was no Facebook or social media. You wrote a few letters, you hoped you saw each other, you made promises. Um, as a matter of fact, I just found my autograph book, Marcy, from my eighth grade party. <laughs> And I was reading all what you wrote, like, please write, please write. I'm like, did I ever write to anybody? <laughs> you know? And um, so I went, my career went um, into Michigan and um, into the great state of Michigan and all the education there. But because of um, that cataclysmic event in eighth grade, you know, our family dynamics changed. I all of a sudden we had a single female head of household, you know, one income and um, ended up going to community college. And that was my first foray into education was the thought of going to a two-year institution. I wanted to go, you know, seven years and be a lawyer at University of Michigan. But I thought if I went two years and I, and I got my associate's degree, nobody could take that away from me. And when you talk about mentors, I had the most amazing professors at Alpena Community College, which is this small community college, you know, about 2,000 students in Northeast Michigan, that specialty is concrete technology. <laughs> we had the time had the world's largest cement plant, and we make the machines that make the cinder blocks. And, you know, the last thing I wanted to do as an 18-year-old was go to a school that specialized in concrete technology. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best um, experience of my life. And um, Mr. Madison... Richard Madison, uh, uh, Dick Meeson, and um, I think his name was Robert, Bob Dun Dinkle, Dunkel, um, who were three professors that really kind of took me under their wing. Mr. Madison would meet with me every semester because I knew I was going to transfer to Michigan State and go over what classes would transfer and what credits would transfer. And um, when I was honored by Alpena Community College, they showed up. And so when you think about the impact oh. they had on my life and that they knew my story and they were like, well, we're going to help this young woman get to her next level to Michigan State, which I did go to and graduate from. <laughs> And then I got my um, master's degree a few years later um, when a, um, a boss of mine, I was looking, I had gone to all the conferences, served on all the conference committees and was looking to do something different. And she said, why don't you get your master's degree? So I went to St. Mary's University in Winona, Minnesota and got a master's in philanthropy and development. And that's kind of how I ended up in this yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny hearing both of you talk and and even reflecting on my life a little bit because my journey into philanthropy, I worked uh, in New Jersey for the public television and radio station, uh, you know, hawking, <laughs> well, at the time, CDs and DVDs. So that, that tells you the, the time frame. But it was back when um, in public television, they were transitioning to, be, to it becoming media. And I really thought that was really exciting. And I remember people saying, it's going to be different. You know, you'll be able to take video from your iPhone and anybody can be a reporter and kind of embracing the future of that and getting to know both of you. 
what I like about your sort of viewpoint toward life and and career is really what's next, you know, and, and, and looking at it as a journey. And it also occurred to me, we talk a lot about books and poets and all kinds of things on this um, podcast, but one of um, my favorite authors, Matt Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell, talked a lot about the desirability of difficulty. And, and nobody really wants that, but you think about those pivotal things that happen in your life, you know, being the new kid at school and not knowing anybody and being middle school age and then, you know, tragedy and, and loss and how if you really lean into it with an entrepreneurial mindset, um, you can use all of that for good. You can you can use it to, to not only help yourself, but help others. And that to me seems to be where we sort of intersect um, into community college. Tell us a little bit more, Lisa, from your vantage point. Um, you are a philanthropic advisor. So do you work with community colleges, helping them uh, raise money? I imagine you have other uh, clients as well. Maybe give us a little uh, flavor into what you do for community colleges and maybe other organizations. Oh, I would love to. You know, one of the things I love doing is um, matchmaking, you know, putting people together. And my first career was in political fundraising. So when I got into public higher ed, um, Becky, I thought, oh, my gosh, this is so easy. <laughs> you know, there's no hostility. <laughs> it's all about doing good in the world. And uh, and it, it, it was so my first fundraising trip. This is no lie. I was at an engineering and science school. And I was meeting with um, paper mills and forestry companies like Quill and Champion and Louisiana Pacific, and everybody said yes, to the point where on the third day I called my boss and said, did you grease the skids? Because it shouldn't <laughs> be this easy. But um, my love of um, fundraising has always been there. Um, when I think back on my life and even in high school, um, you know, being with different clubs and, and raising money. But today, I actually specialize in working with two-year um, and community colleges. Um, I came into it naturally, I think, because I was one of the few consultants um, in the Chicagoland area that had any experience because I'd gone to a community college and I'd served on the foundation board of directors. So I kind of knew you know, what the lay of the land was. And I wasn't trying to put a four-year model or four-year research institution model on a two-year institution. So um, in Chicagoland, worked with many um, two-year institutions, you know, from Harper College to College of DuPage, Moraine Valley Community College. I was just at a White Sox game where they were being honored. It was the coolest thing. I was like, wow, you know, talk about full circle. And, and now across the South in Louisiana, South Carolina, Texas, a lot of two-year community college technical schools. And um, what I bring to the table, what my firm brings to the table is that different um, lens through which we view fundraising for two-year community and technical colleges. Um, it's not the overlay of the four-year model. It's saying you're unique, you're different. Let's talk about your role in the community. Um, and much like what happened to public higher education institutions, their budgeting from the state or from you know the county is being cut and cut and cut. So mm -hmm. roles that Marcy holds are becoming more and more um, needed um, every day by two-year institutions that that outside resource development, bringing in that partnership, making those matches, you know, oh, you have this need over here in the hotel business. Oh, you have this need over here in the automotive industry. Let us be that gap filler for you. Um, and we're going to do some workforce development along the way. Yeah, I think, you know, that first tenet of entrepreneurial mindset of really evaluating um, your assets, your bird in hand assets. And I think having the um, ability to see that. And sometimes I think whether we're talking to a student or we're talking to a college president or a faculty member, sometimes what's right in front of them, they don't realize what a great asset it is. And so it's kind of our job to say, you know, have you thought about this? Or when I look out the window, I see, you know, you have this amazing landscape or you have something like that. And one of the things that the three of us have been talking about, and we've been talking about this internally um, at NACI, which stands for the National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship, is creating a space where development um, leaders like yourselves and also board members and people that are excited about fundraising as we are, but really want to kind of take it to the next level. We hope you're enjoying this episode with Marcy and Lisa 
This is just part of the conversation. So be sure to tune in next week for part two.